Okay, third year students, welcome to sanitised, socially distanced third year Edinburgh's laboratories, both over a Delta Wing. smoke one to put smoke uh, into the um, into the vortex and the laser is pulsing over the back end of the model so you can see where the laser is in the wake behind the wing. Uh, you can see the vortex over the wing, it's that line of smoke running from left to right and where the smoke illuminates, sorry, where the laser illuminates the smoke behind the trailing edge is how the vortex then proceeds behind uh, the, the actual wing itself. That's roughly where the probe was moved. Okay, so there is a, a leading edge vortex off a delta wing. Okay, folks, so for the uh, sanitized, socially distanced um, third year aerodynamics laboratory, we're going to run the wind tunnel test, but I'm here in the wind tunnel control room on my own. So, the delta wing is prepared in the wind tunnel, uh, all the instruments here are prepared, everything is ready to go, alright? So, just show you what we're going to do. This computer system here controls the wind tunnel speed, that is done automatically through a control mechanism. There are sensors in the wind tunnel, uh, we get the dynamic pressure, um, and that signal is then fed into a PID controller which then controls the speed of the fan. This is the uh, turntable and sting balance system computer and over here is a computer system for monitoring the wind tunnel motor health. So I'm actually quite busy, alright, so what I don't want anything to go, what, what I don't want to happen is anything to go awry. So. Uh, the first thing that we do is um, record the system tears. Um, basically, as the model changes angle of attack, the force acting on the balance due to the weight of the model changes. So we have to take um, a tear load with no wind loading at all. So I will set the balance to zero force and I will start that tear off. So start. So I've pre-programmed a set of angles of attack. The model will pitch to each angle, record the tear loading due to weight, and, and then move to the next pitch angle. Okay, so the idea then is that when we run the actual wind tunnel test, 
the model will be set to the same angles of attack, the loads will be measured again, so of course the test loading minus the tear loading at the same angle of attack, the same model orientation, equals the aerodynamic loading. All right. So, progressing through the tear load, I will get ready for the um, actual wind load going on. So, tear load continuing, almost done. Okay, that's done. Move the model back to zero. Move the model back to zero. Get it ready, set for eight steps of aerodynamic loading. So, we are now ready to go. Motor fields on. Wind tunnel speed, go. So it'll take a few seconds for the wind tunnel to get on condition. You can hear the fan spooling up. There's not much to watch. Hopefully that thing stays put. That's the wind noise you can hear. The fan noise going around the tunnel. So this will be the wind tunnel speed coming on condition. The white line is the, wind, is the current wind tunnel speed, and there are, target, there are targets for the wind tunnel speed, plus or minus half a percent of where I want to be. Coming on condition, as soon as it's on condition I'll just press the test to go. Okay, we're on condition, and start the data sweep. So. Moves to angle of attack, settles for a bit, records data, and so on up the angle of attack range that I'm interested in. Everything's going fine, wind tunnel on condition, motor is healthy, so I'm fairly relaxed, nothing's broken, nothing's flown down the wind tunnel, nothing has fallen off. You don't want wind tunnel tests to be too exciting. If you don't do your preparation work beforehand, things can go wrong. I can now hear the sound changing as we go to a very high angle of attack. That's aerodynamic noise now. Coming on to the final data point, high angle of attack. That's done. So the loads displayed and recorded move back to zero angle of attack and I can switch the tunnel off. Okay, so that is the test. We can upload data and view it. So with systems here will automatically process the recorded data we're not interested in side force, lift to drag ratio, CL over CD as a function of alpha, um, notional um, um, pitching moment, uh, aerodynamic center position, moment about the aerodynamic center, aerodynamic center position, drag coefficient, drag coefficient, and lift coefficient. So those are typically things that we'll get from this. Okay, so that is a typical wind tunnel test. And the center of pressure position. What you see on the computer screen here is the uh, flow measurement of the delta wing using the seven hole probe and it's showing you the velocity. So um, the colored contours are the U component, the streamwise velocity towards uh, the camera. Um, and the black arrows are the cross flow velocities. So what we see here on the, on the picture is a projection of the delta wing surface. So you can just see the delta wing surface there. So there's the leading edge of the delta wing. And the, the shear layer, the, the flow separates off the uh, leading edge. The shear layer comes around and here's the 
here's the vortex roll up. Okay, so there's this is very nice swirling around this vortex center. There's a lot of curvature in the flow field as well. We can see this velocity vectors coming around, curling up, and the ISO U contours are curling up and dropping down there. So there's quite a lot of nice structure in that flow that can be resolved with that seven hole probe. So, if it wasn't for this COVID nonsense, you'd have been operating the computer, um, op operating the computers, um, running the wind tunnel, running the balance system, running the traverse for the probe, okay, also doing the smoke flow visualization to work out where the vortex is so the probe can be positioned. So, that's what we've got for this lab. Alright, thank you for watching.